Dear Diary, I was once one of the hottest female artists of my time. During the 90s, I embodied sexuality and my fans said that I reminded them of Little Kim and Foxy Brown. My hit single, Freak Like Me, had every woman opening up to their sexuality and their desires, truly wanting to be a freak like me. Men that were boyfriends and husbands were thanking me for rubbing off on their women. And to be quite honest, I was just being me. I wasn't intentionally trying to turn these women into freaks. I was just being me, Adina Howard. I had it all back then, but as I sit here now, writing in this damn diary, I am forced to ask myself, damn, where did it all go wrong? And how did I wind up without a career? Well, I guess you can say it was my mouth. I was born as Adina Marie Howard on November 14th, 1973 and I was raised in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am the oldest of four girls. My dad had a substance abuse issues and after he went on this getaway to California with this other woman, my mom decided to leave him when he came back. So we moved to Arizona, me, my mom and my sisters. Everything was going fine while we were there and then one day I was in school and I was in gym class. I looked over at one of my classmates and I thought to myself, Hmm, he looks like Tom Cruise from the movie Top Gun. So I didn't say anything to the boy, but out of nowhere, he turned around, spit on me, and called me the N-word. Well, when I went home and I told my mom about this, she was livid. So she immediately went back up to the school. She spoke with the school's administrators, and they told her there was nothing they could do. So my mom allowed me to leave the school, and eventually we decided to pack up and leave Arizona altogether. So in the mid-90s, I hooked up with Lavio Harris. He was this producer slash manager type of guy. He helped me record some demos and later land a deal with Megadon East West Records. So at that time, that's when I really started getting noticed and I got a lot of recognition with my debut album, Do You Wanna Ride? and my single, Freak Like Me. I also had some other little small hits like What's Love Got To Do With It. I did that with Warren G, Freak and You Know It, Nasty Grind, and then of course T-Shirt and Panties with Jamie Foxx. But I really don't feel like my career ever really got off the ground and I'm going to tell you why. So Sylvia Rohn, who at the time was a label executive at Atlantic Records, she was also my boss. Well, her and I got into it. I had started dating Wanye Morris who was the lead singer of Boys to Men, and I did not know this, but he was also in a relationship with Brandy. I mean, it was really an emotional thing. It was really heated. And I think Brandy and I were two young ladies with a lot of our egos in the way, and we were going through it about a guy. So when Sylvia heard about it, she told me to focus more on my career and let the relationship with Wanye go. So Wendy Williams gets a hold of this. She wants to sit down and do an interview with me. So, of course, I sit down and I do the interview with Wendy. So, during the conversation, I had some not-so-nice things to say about Brandy and Sylvia. And somehow, what I said got back to Sylvia. So, you know, that pissed her off and she was heated. Even the owner of my record label said that it was like having two queens in one castle. And the one that wrote the checks was going to win. So, because of all this, the release date of my second album was delayed indefinitely. I said something very inappropriate about the head of the label and she pulled the emergency brake and shut everything down. And rightfully so, because when you have the power to do that, you don't like what people are saying about you, yeah, you can pull the plug. So there was a lot of tension at the label, but eventually they released my second album and that one was called Welcome to Fantasy Island in 1997. It did okay, but because it did not do as they expected it to do, they shelved it that same year. Now, me and Sylvia, we eventually did sit down to discuss our issues and where I stood in the industry and how I could experience longevity, but I was not trying to hear anything that she had to say. And since she was in charge and she had all the power, she dropped me from the label. So I decided to then sign with Rough Town Records to do my third album, and I titled this one, The Second Coming. But the label did not promote me. The album peaked only at number 61 on Billboard. And then issues with Rough Town led me to be dropped from them as well. 
So I tried to do another album. And so I teamed up with Arsenal Records in 2007 to do my fourth project called Private Show. And now that newer artists were out, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, I did not do well at all. So after this, I basically was done with the industry. I was not used to being famous and not having in my privacy. Definitely was not ready for all of the backlash that you receive from the public so basically i just left the music industry because i really believe that the beef that i had with sylvia after the incident with brandy and wanye i believe that i was blackballed i mean look at how i signed with other labels and they wouldn't even do their part to promote and market me and make me successful so i believe that sylvia had me blackballed so i decided to just be done and try something new so in 2010 I enrolled in culinary school. I got married to my best friend Sherman Jordan in 2011 and then in 2012 I finally graduated from culinary school and then I worked my way from a line cook at a resort in Arizona and I became a chef there. So Sherman and I though unfortunately we did not make it. I believe we were just too good of friends to be in a marriage so we divorced in 2017 but we are still on good terms. Now, I know that God wants me to share my story with the world because where I am in my journey today, I believe I'm a survivor, that I'm still standing and that there's always life after anything that you do. I still make my music every now and then. In fact, I just released a new single, which was encouraged by my husband. So yes, I could make a comeback if I really wanted to. But this time around, I'm going to be more involved making wiser decisions and not letting my ego get in the way but one thing i do know i'm not gonna do this i'm not changing my sexy image i'm going to keep that that's always going to be my signature but i'm just going to be more mature with my sexiness now i will admit though that i am not making any money from my songs freak like me t-shirt and panties i have not seen a royalty check for those songs because of the way my contract was set up when I got signed but I damn sure plan on fighting for what is rightfully mine because those are my songs I will never make a mistake like that again though and I encourage all young artists start your own labels go independent don't let a company take advantage of you like they did me they will leave you penniless with nothing but a wet ass Well, that concludes this edition of Dear Diary. Drop down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on Adina Howard, her career ending over an affair with Wanye Morris while he was dating Brandy. Who would have thought? So drop down in the comment section. I am interested in hearing from you. Until next time, be sure to like this video, share this video, but most importantly, Be sure to subscribe to the channel and we will catch you on the next Dear Diary. Bye.